Before I finish the last desktop CNC machine, I began working on a drawing tool attachment which I could use to demonstrate the machine at Maker Central 2019. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the steps along the way, how the design evolved, and what I ended up with to produce these. These are some drawings made using the CNC machine. They are vector illustrations of Picasso's Guernica, a famous painting depicting the horrors of the Spanish Civil War, and in particular, the bombing of the unarmed Basque village of Guernica by the Spanish nationalists and their fascist allies. The work, which initially received a moot welcome, now sets a benchmark, which unfortunately countless other events have held their candles up to. The work shocks us into acknowledging cruelty and the blinding efficiency modernity would bring to the process. Raining indiscriminate bombs upon civilians was a relatively new concept at the time, and the place these acts had in the public imagination was only worsened by the perpetrator's choice of conducting theirs on a market day, when the town would have been laden with people, stalls and goods. The first part I made on the 3D printer was a mounting bracket with a large internal thread that I could screw different attachments to. I wanted to build in stages in case I changed my mind or made a mistake, so I could quickly redesign a single component. 3D printing is a time-consuming process, so breaking things down into parts means I'm not waiting too long for something to complete. The smaller nut threads into the mounting bracket I installed earlier, and also accepts a T-nut into a slot which I could secure a grub screw through to hold the shaft, in this case a pencil. Okay, what I'm going to do now is to home the machine so I can find the uh, machine position and set that all to zero. Then I'm going to move the tool, which is in this case a pen, over the probe button that I've set up at the back of the machine so I can find the offset along the Z axis. I'll then drop down and do a probe cycle, uh, contacting the button so the machine stops, and then I'll work out the Z height between where the button was pressed and the wasteboard that I've just added. Once I've done that, I'll be able to use that as part of my startup protocol when setting up the machine to do uh, drawings. Totally flatten the pencil. Just going to sharpen the pencil and the uh, letters come out. Okay, now I'm going to move up and just rest the tip of the pencil on the wasteboard. Okay, I've set up all the macros now. And this is where my origin position will be. It's about five mil in from either end of this board. I started with a pencil to test how the machine would perform, as up to this point I've not had a chance to observe the ball screw's accuracy. I draw a simple circle, and it looks good, although the mechanism isn't providing enough adjustability to allow for a constant contact between the lead and the paper. Okay, that looks pretty good. I haven't actually surfaced this wasteboard, so I don't know how true it is in relation to the movement of the X and Y axis. But maybe what I can do is put some kind of material down that will take uh, a little bit of compression from the drawing tool. So maybe something like leather. Uh, the main thing is that this circle looks really good and the machine's not doing anything unusual. From this point I began developing the drawing implement, first by redesigning and printing the screw-in adapter so the opening hole could accept a pencil and spring, which would provide constant contact from the pen nib onto the paper. Okay, I've just made another pen holding tool, same principle as the last one, but this time the pen fits in the holder. I then have a piece at the top which acts as a locking collar on that end and there's a spring so obviously that can get stuck there but what I'm doing is I'm placing a spring in this section here and then I've got the last piece that needs to fit 
and there again I just need to widen that up a bit. You do that with either the bearing tool like this, because often the first layer can compress out. I need to do it a little bit more, so I'm going to use one of these conical and I should be able to tighten this up as I model the thread inside there and you can see once that's screwed in there's a little bit of compression which will allow the pen to keep on the drawing surface despite uh, potentially the waste put or the surface not being entirely flat with the with the tool and fit this piece in hand tighten it and what I need to look out for is a pen that's a lot more parallel but this is a good start The lighting has changed at this point, as I was experimenting with different undergantry LEDs to indicate different states the machine was in. The RGB LEDs produced a cold light which messed up my colour correction on the camera, so apologies for that if you even noticed. It's making this a little bit difficult to film as everything is uh, either orange around the CNC machine or if I revert back to white balance setting which is for this room you can see the CNC machine over here looks like it's the right uh, shade of MDF, uh, but this looks like ice cold blue. I began to notice a pen would wick too quickly and the lines would fade into an embossed mark. I decided the mechanism should mimic the angle and hold of a human hand, so I designed this. This version uses a brass bushing which I push fit into the 3D printed part. That then slides along a 8mm parallel shaft with a locking collar at either end and a compression spring at the top. Okay, that's got a really good action. And tell almost minimal flex so that should improve the accuracy where the point lands so I'm gonna to have to be careful because this is so close to the z-axis that there could be some instances where the pen gets stuck underneath this bottom plate maybe there's something I can do slanting these edges up a little bit so that if it is across on one side and the bit is being pulled up maybe it can force the pen to move to the front of the machine one thing i have to do before probing with this version is to find the central point of the pen's nib i do this by dropping the pen down on the paper and rotating it by hand if it produces an arc or semicircle that indicates the point is not centered and i raise or lower the z-axis slightly and adjust the pen accordingly once I've got this as centered as possible, I can then perform a probing cycle. Okay, that looks much better. The first version held the pen at 45 degrees to the drawing surface, but that didn't produce the best effect, so I changed this after measuring my own hand holding a pen. Okay, I'm just going to turn this machine off so the blue light doesn't interfere with what you're looking at. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've been achieving with these prints. Uh, the first one I did with a 0.4mm tipped fine liner. It's hard to see, but this is basically a kind of inky pad at the end, which I thought would kind of have a good contact uh, when I was using the 45 degree uh, jig uh, but for some reason it began to dry up and I think the issue was uh, with these the ink is quite runny and the duration of contact on the paper of the pen itself is uh, causing the ink to wick out um, and maybe create dry patches where the reserve of ink in the pen is not being able to transfer to the nib. See, I think there's some kind of capillary action going on 
with these pens. I then tried to use a different pen, so that's um, 45 degrees with a fine liner, that's 45 degrees with, uh, with actually this pen here, and that I can tell has a ball at the end of the nib, so it's not just an inky pad. Uh, but again, this began to dry out, uh, and I just can't seem to get this pen. And I can see there's still ink in there, but it's just not reaching the nib for some reason. Um, so I've grabbed another one, and then swapped over to this uh, 60 degree pen holding jig. So you can see, hold them side by side, so you can see the angle that the pen is held at is different. Um, and I literally turned my literally turned my back for a second and something happened the nib just sprung off you can see the splatter there the next option is to try a different pen this is a uh, big crystal grip so it's got a ball at the end the ball looks a lot bigger than the other one and the ink in this I'm going to imagine it's actually a lot more viscous but anyway I'm going to set this up and have another crack at getting this drawing done Okay, it's finished, so I'm just going to turn that off and I'll lift the paper up so you can see. I'm definitely going to have to think about a better way of holding the material down. But that looks pretty good. The line isn't as dark as it would be with a fine liner pen, but it's more consistent. So I'm going to end the video now with some higher resolution photos of some of the drawings. The files and part list to make the drawing tool will be available to my patrons, so follow the link there if you want to join that little circle. And if you don't have time for that, but still want one or even a drawing, I can sell directly to anyone interested, so do let me know in the comment section below. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to sacrifice a thumb to the algorithm gods and you'll catch me in the next one.